Is your horse hard to catch, always pulling away from you or constantly hugging the fence during groundwork? Have you ever wondered how trainers build that seemingly magical connection with their horses that follow them everywhere without leads or ropes? In this series, we are going to crack the code to Liberty work with my five-year-old little Hawaii Mustang mare, Criminal Mischief. One of the first things I teach any horse I work with is how to circle me off of whip pressure. I use the whip to cue the horse forward, to send their hindquarters away from me, and to change directions. We use many common crutches to help direct the horse while circling, such as the halter and lead, or in the case of round pinning, the fence. Working a horse at liberty means you remove the fence and any physical connection you have to the horse. Before I remove the halter, I want to see that the horse understands that she should keep her nose tipped into the center and does so even when there is slack in the lead. If she were pulling out, looking away, or creating tension on the lead, we would go back to flexion exercises until she understood to stay soft to the halter. Now I'm going to remove Mischief's halter and lead and test how well she understands the circling exercise without a lead to keep her near me. She sends out fine and understands to move off the pressure of the whip when I hold it parallel to the ground, but gets lost halfway through the circle and doesn't understand yet to stay with me. I'm very happy that she turned to look at me, so I'm going to back up and take pressure off. This may seem counterproductive to reward her for stopping, but to build connection and draw, our first priority will always be rewarding when she's looking at me or moving towards me. Anytime she faces up, I will remove all pressure so she begins to associate me with rest from work. The moment her attention breaks and she begins to think away from me, I put the pressure back on by asking her to change direction or to move back out in the circle. It's important to note that I am primarily moving her with a whip and not my body language at this time. I do not want to push her away with loud body language as this would discourage connection and can actually unintentionally teach her that she can just face up and ignore my body language when I do want her to move out. So this is already looking like a good start to Liberty Circles, as she's successfully circling without needing to be held in with a lead rope. I have zero doubt, however, that if we were to move to a larger area, I would completely lose her. The next step is to teach her to stay with me. To teach this, we are going to play a simple game of pressure and release to teach draw, and allow her to decide to stay near me. This will be the first step to strengthening her draw to me. I want to be the release of pressure and some place she could feel peace and comfort. Anytime her attention is directed away from me or she is seeking the fence, I will apply pressure with the lunge whip in the direction of her hindquarters to get her to yield away and have her turn to face me. The second she turns in, I will take all pressure off and take a step backwards to allow her into the middle with me. She walks in towards me, so I reward her with scratches and a few minutes of rest. Next, all I will do is walk away and see if she follows me. I do not push her out, but rather I leave. She wants to stay faced up, so she rotates her body to follow my movement. I praise her and walk away again. This time she does not move to follow, so I increase pressure towards her hind end, bouncing the whip. She understands and turns to face me. As long as she's facing me, I will not bother her or ask her to do anything. I've heard trainers call this exercise many different things, draw, connection, join up, even just emphasizing that this is what a horse will do when they respect you as their leader. Well, I'm not here to come up with some fancy dialogue or attempt to sell you classes on the secret to this or that. This is really quite simple when you look at what we're doing from a psychology perspective. I'm simply nurturing a conditioned response in an effort to communicate to mischief that I would like her to pay attention and follow me. Just as pressure against her pole from a halter means to follow when I'm leading, pressure towards her hindquarters means, excuse me, please look at me, and when I walk away, do follow. So anytime I lose mischief's focus, I'm still going to calmly direct the whip towards her hindquarters until she faces up, and then walk away and simply start the process over if she doesn't follow. Here she circles instead of following, which is fine. This is where changing my body language will change the cue and draw her in. While she's moving to the right, I will step back with my right leg and position myself ahead of her driveline. 
while still directing her forward with a lunge whip in my left hand. This will pull her head towards me and push her hind end away so that she's faced up. I will lower my whip and walk away. In the beginning, the horse may have a tendency to stay in the middle and pivot to face you, but spinning in place is much harder for them than turning while walking forwards, so with patience they will decide to follow. This is a pretty solid example of how to make the right thing easy and the wrong thing hard. The horse is not punished for doing the wrong thing, it is simply just a more difficult task, so the horse decides to do the easier task. There are a couple scenarios where the horse may find an even easier solution, and you need to know how to solve the problem without making it an event. If you find the horse circling you and then not coming into the middle when you ask, they can get stuck out there and take advantage of their ability to just turn their head to look at you without needing to spin. When Mischief discovers this loophole, I just continue walking the circle and push her hindquarters out of my way. In her mind, I'm sure she's thinking, oh, well, that didn't work, and just decides it's easier to keep following me. The fun thing about working with a headstrong, independent mare is that she has to think this is all her idea. She says, ha, huh, if I stay behind you, you can't bother me, can you? And then it becomes a little game for her. The best thing I can do at this point is to stop and praise her for being so clever. Once the horse is following reliably, we may run into our next hurdle. The horse is following only as far as is necessary to face me and stay out of my way, but is falling behind and lacks energy and enthusiasm. To make this game more interesting and keep the horse on her toes, I'm going to gradually add in more turns and speed increases at random. If she finds herself getting lost, she will stay more engaged to avoid needing to do tight turns to catch up. This takes time and practice, and Mischief is putting forth a great effort for her first attempt, so I'm sure to stop and praise her often when she is next to me. Praise is so important to get them to relax and understand they are doing the right thing. I may also use treats to help reinforce the concept that being in the middle with me is a good place to be. Mischief has gone from seeking the exit and thinking away from me to willingly and calmly following me at liberty. We're going to practice this until perfect, breaking it into many short sessions over several weeks, and should soon be able to do this in much larger open spaces. This will be the basis of all liberty tricks and exercises, so we won't move forward until her drawdomy is solid and we are set up to succeed. I'm very excited to see how we progress in this series, so be on the lookout for part two coming soon. I hope this shows clearly from a beginner's perspective the mechanisms behind draw and how trainers are able to convince their horses to follow them everywhere, without force and without ropes. You can see from Mischief's relaxed lower lip, she is not scared or stressed during this exercise. She's done such a great job that I will allow her to stop and relax and end the session. See you in the next video.